What's up, Scorpio? How are you guys doing? Time to go ahead and get started on your extended reading for October 2023. So stick around. What's up with my Scorpio friends? How are you guys doing? Extended reading time. The extended reading is just basically to squeeze the last couple drops of information out of the month of October. And then we're going to be moving on to the mid-month readings where we check to see if timelines have changed. That's actually my favorite. My favorite reading of the whole month is the mid-month. Anyway... For those of you who would like to schedule a personal reading, all the information is in the description box of this video. And don't forget about the big October reading sale where there's $40 readings on my website, y'all. I haven't done anything like that since 2019, dude. So all the information on how to go about doing that and everything else you need to know that's relevant to anything is all in the description of this video. All right, we're going to start this off with the person from the past. Is there anything else we can tell Scorpio about who or whatever they are dealing with from the past? Let's see here. Oh, nine of cups. Is that you? All right, page of wands in the reverse. Okay, didn't this already come through for you? This may just be telling the same story, honestly. It might. So this person's giving you the silent treatment. Look at this. Okay, so we got the four of cups, seven of cups. You know what that kind of tells me? That kind of tells me that I think they may be, their, their idea in their mind is to try to see if they can make you jealous. You know, especially if you were to go look at their social media and they're overtly putting up things, you know, like them and somebody else taking pictures with other people, dating other people and whatnot, uh, wanting you to see it and get mad, I think. I think that's their goal. That's what they would like to be able to do. Now, are they successful in their little quest to go out and find somebody else? I don't know. That's kind of what I'm feeling like this person's goal is, though. Ah, see, look, every single time, every time, though, every single time you always see that it's all a big front, it's all a big show. So, okay, yeah. Now, see, they're waiting. They're waiting. Giving you the silent treatment, waiting to reel you in. I've been seeing a lot of that throughout October. A lot of that past past person energy, seeing if they can reel you back in. What is going on with that? I don't understand that. Is it something in the astrology or something? I don't. I don't know. I don't know why wow, that typically tends to happen very frequently. You'll see, like if you go through, at least me. I don't know about you all. If if you only watch like your sign, but me doing it, there will be certain things throughout the month that. All of the signs will have one little common theme that keeps popping up for every sign, you know, and that's one thing I've seen a lot throughout October is past person seeing if they can get some kind of reaction out of you or trying to reel you back in for whatever reason. And it's usually not a very legitimate reason. Let's see if we can get their intentions and feelings. Mm -hmm. Eight of wands. Oh, see, look, we got that Wheel of Fortune reverse right there. Okay, I don't think this person really has any actual intentions at the end of the day. How do you put words behind that where there's no end goal? 
You know, it would be one thing. Okay, so so it'd be one thing if their goal was to see if they could reel you back in because they want to try to reconcile with you. You know, or maybe if they just want to get closure. But I don't think that's the case. This kind of feels like that energy where, well, in matter of fact, I think what they're trying to do is fill an unfillable void. You know, and it's kind of similar to those people. You ever, you ever met people that go out there and they pursue relationships, but they don't ever settle down with anybody? They pursue relationships because they're addicted to the chase. You know, it's kind of like a cat with a mouse. The cat chases the mouse and then it kills it. And then once the mouse stops running, the cat gets bored with it. And there's a lot, you know, this kind of feels similar to that, if that makes any sense at all. I hope I, I, I made that analogy understandable. But I think, honestly, though, this person does have some feelings for you. But again, there's that nine of swords, same one I just showed you in the last spread. Um, this person's just a very broken, confused, fucked up, empty, lonely, broken individual. And like I said, I don't think they have any intentions of trying to reconcile. Their number one goal is to try to find somebody new. In their little mind, if they found somebody new and that made you mad, that would probably, they think that would make them feel better. They would cross the finish line. I won. Scorpio is, is jealous and mad. I win, but then it's like, okay, well, here I am in a new relationship. Okay, now what? Now what after that? You know, you see what I'm saying? It's that toxic cycle that spins around in a loop and never, ever, ever resolves itself. Is there going to be an outcome here? Is there going to be any communication or actions taken? Anything, anything happening here? Four of Wands. I know here this kind of looks a little bit to a cuppy, like two people coming together, but I, I don't read it as that. That's an open door of opportunity. Yeah, there's an open door of opportunity for the two of you to come together and connect, but I don't really feel like that's happening. I think you're laying low for a while with the hermit card here. Kind of laying low for a little bit. Death card. You have unfinished business, unanswered questions. But you're laying low and you're letting this come to an end. Because you know that as soon as you heal from this and get yourself back, you already know that the next person coming in, you ain't settling for no bullshit. And you already know it. Is there any advice? Is there any advice for this situation? Any advice? High Priestess in the reverse. Oh, Four of Pentacles reversed. Moon card, page of swords. Okay. Well, I tell you what, if this person was to show up in your inbox, that's okay. But I would do the best that I can if I was you to be the bigger person. If they if they try to make you jealous, don't play the game. Don't play their game with them. Don't play the game. Let me let me clarify something. Hang on. There's a big missing piece of the puzzle here. Hang on a second. Seven of Pentacles in the reverse. Two of Pentacles. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I would kind of lay low for a little bit. If they do show up in your inbox, keep them at an arm's distance right now, I think. And just don't don't respond or react to any attempts 
because you know what people usually do. They're going to start poking at you and seeing how you react. And all they're really doing is testing to see if they still have any power over you. It's all they're doing. It's all they're doing. It's all they're doing. When an ex shows up, and I've had lots of readings here over the past week where an ex has shown back up in my life. I've, I've seen that probably 10 different readings I've done in the last week. And they always do the same thing. They show up. Because usually their quest to find somebody new was unsuccessful. So now they're going to test and see. So they're going to poke. And they're going to poke very covertly and clandestinely. Poke, pick, and poke. I wouldn't let them do it. Lay low for a little bit. Lay low for a little bit. Keep doing what you're doing. Because, oh, and I forgot to show you. Shit, I just put it up. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I just put it up. Oh, there it is. I actually really like this Hierophant card in this deck because this is all about learning lessons. Okay, this is the spiritual teacher. If my camera will focus. My camera never likes to focus on this deck. Anyway, that's a teacher right there, if you can see that. Because this right here taught you a lesson that if you take the time to meditate on it and learn that lesson... The next person that comes in, that that situation, that energetic dynamic is going to be completely different. So if you do the hard work now, the healing, you know, the, the, the work that needs to be done, while they're out trying to make you jealous, one of these days, you're going to actually make them jealous. You're really going to make them look as stupid as they're trying to make you look. If you do the hard work now, the tables always turn, always. I was just telling uh, another sign that the other day. Was it Aquarius? I don't remember. Anyway, the tables will turn if you do the work now. Let's look at the current person, man. Let's look at the current person. Current person disclaimer. If you're not experiencing issues, challenges, or problems with your current person, this is not for you. What's going on with Scorpio and the current person? What's the issue here? The Fool card? Some of you may be starting to think this is something that you jumped into too fast, maybe. Maybe you're starting to realize this person isn't who you thought they were. You jumped into it too quick without getting to know them. Could be a fellow Scorpio for some of you, but I feel like that's your energy right there. You feel like it's slowly but surely coming to an end. See, you feel all alone anyways. Yeah, see, look. We got nine of cups, nine of pentacles here. So you, you even, even though you're with this person, you still feel like you're all alone all by yourself. Doesn't even really seem like you're in a relationship. Maybe with the King of Wands in the reverse here, this person just doesn't feel like they take the relationship seriously. Just doesn't feel like there's a very deep connection between the two of you. And I don't think I've ever really met a Scorpio that doesn't want a deep connection. Okay, fixed water. Fixed water. Usually, fixed water is what? A pond a lake, a pool. It's fixed in one spot. It's usually pretty fucking deep, isn't it? Usually. Typically. It's not shallow. Usually a fixed body of water isn't really all that shallow. So I've never met a Scorpio that don't want a deep connection. I never have. Maybe they're out there. I'm not saying they're not. I've never met one though. Every Scorpio I've ever met, you know, you want to connect with them, it's going to get deep. Deep and heavy, boy. Deep and heavy. So it just doesn't really feel like there's a really deep, heavy connection between the two of you. Maybe it kind of felt like it at first, and now it's not really seeming like it quite so much anymore. Could be an Aquarius for some of you. Yeah, it just kind of feels like that deep, heavy connection. I don't know if the connection is going away. Or maybe, like I said, I think you're kind of starting to see a different side of this person. You've been starting to, to kind of see that you're not who I painted you out to be in my mind. 
And that's so funny to say that too, because you see this card right here, page of cups is actually painting a picture and it's in the reverse. So it's like, you're not who I painted you out to be in my mind. That's interesting. Well, let's see their energy, their intentions, how they feel about you, how they feel about the situation. Okay. Uh, Eight of Pentacles reversed. Yeah, I don't know if they want to, they really want to put a lot of work into this. You know, the work that you have to do, that you have to do. It doesn't matter if you're in a relationship with a karmic soulmate or if you have finally connected with the divine partner the universe picked for you. You know, you got to work on that, right? Oh, yeah. You know, you got to work on it. I don't know who needs to hear that. Scorpio, cross watcher, or just random fucker that watches my videos for no reason. You know, you got to work on that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't look like this person's really wanting to do any work. Maybe they have the idea in their mind that the perfect relationship should just be two couples who kick their feet back and just exist together. And, you know, sorry, got news for you. It don't work that way. It don't work that way, but it doesn't look like this person's really wanting to do a whole lot of work to, to, to take things to the next level. Ooh, I, and there is a side of this person that you don't know. There is a side of this person that you don't know with the moon card, seven of swords here. They ain't a hundred percent transparent with you. And you know this, don't you? Yeah. They don't want this to come to an end though, but it's getting to the point in the connection. Every next level. I know you all hear me say all the time that you never level up without being tested, right? Well, that's the same in a relationship too. You and your person don't make it up to the next level until the two of you overcome a challenge. Every challenge you and your person overcome, the two of you level up together. And it gets to a point, especially depending on, on how long term this is. But at some point you all, it's time for you all to make it up to the next level with the world card here, start a new cycle together. And that's going to take some work and effort, you know? And if it doesn't, if, all it takes is one person not willing to put forth that effort. And then it starts looping around, <gasps> excuse me, and repeating itself. And the cycle starts repeating and repeating. And you all start spinning in circles and spinning in circles. And then eventually, if you spin in circles for too long, you'll eventually spin out of control. I'm thinking this person, yeah, see, we got king and queen of swords. They don't want a real deep connection, I don't think. I think they're afraid of a deep emotional connection. Yeah. Especially if you're dealing with an air sign. Y'all, water signs need to stay away from the air signs. What does water and air make? Bubbles, right? Bubbles. Now, bubbles can be very, very pretty, but they're very short-lived and very temporary. Very pretty for a little bit, bubble, 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 but very, very quickly, pop, they pop and then they're gone, right? Just saying, I know somebody needed to hear that. All right, what's the outcome of the situation for October? Creeping up into Scorpio season, eh? Page of Swords. So y'all are having a conversation. Y'all are sitting down and talking this out. Three of Cups reversed. And the Lover's card, man. Okay. Ah, oh, man. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. What in the fuck is this? So we got King, Queen of Cups, Lover's Card, indicating a connection that you're having a really hard time walking away from. This is a really intense soul connection. 
It may not be a really deep, intense emotional connection, but it's a deep, intense soul connection. And some of you may be just now finding out that those are two different things. A lot of people, every, a lot of, especially in the spiritual community, everybody wants to conflate soul contracts with romance and soul connections with emotional connections. You know, everybody wants to conflate spirituality with romance. In the grand spiritual scheme of things, romance is just one of the many, 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 many silly games that humans play. And you're, I think you're starting to see that. That this may not be a really heavy, intense emotional connection, but it's a really fucking intense soul connection. Really intense. Really intense. You know? I'm thinking you're contemplating ending this and walking away. I think you got one foot out the door. One foot out the door. Seven of swords again. You're planning your escape, aren't you? I think you're planning it. But you're not doing it because you know this is going to be really hard to walk away from. Really hard to walk away from. You know it's not. This isn't going to be one of them things you can just walk away from and continue living your life. What's the advice? What is the advice? Three of wands. It's saying, hold up. Wait on that. Queen of Wands in the reverse. Be flexible. Be flexible. Very frequently, a change isn't made until we change something inside. And no, that does not mean that it's your fault. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't mean that you're the one in the wrong. It can sometimes, but not necessarily. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I find, found myself in so many situations, so many situations in which I'm being done wrong. I'm being done very clearly wrong. But I always take a minute to step back and say, okay, well, what is this teaching me? And this is teaching me something. So I got to go inside and monitor my vibration, monitor my energy to see what this is teaching me. What is this trying to awaken inside of me? What is this trying to, to get me to focus on in here? Okay. So just hold off on that a little bit because I think I'm not saying that you're the one doing wrong. It doesn't matter if you're the one doing wrong or not. You find yourself in a challenging situation like this. Always take a step back, separate yourself from your emotions and observe them. Observe your frequency, observe your emotions, observe the triggers and everything that's going on in here and just observe it. Don't identify as it pop away from it and observe it. Cause usually situations like this, that's what, that's, that's nine times out of 10. That's what the universe is doing. It's shining a big spotlight on something that may not even have anything to do directly with the situation that we're in. But once we start working on it and playing with it, and then once we make a genuine frequency change, whatever, whatever that energy is, then that extends out into other areas and aspects of our life and starts affecting our life in other ways we never would have thought. No, it does. Every little thing is connected. Every little thing. So hold up on that just a little bit. But eventually, we are going to need to have a conversation, though. Eventually, at some point, we're going to have to set some boundaries. You know, but I'm thinking that October... Going into Scorpio season, October, November is all going to be about inner self-reflection. Okay. Because that fixed water, that fixed energy, I'm a fixed sign too. I'm an Aquarius. A lot of times during Aquarius season, a big, it's, it's a big old spotlight on, okay, 
how can I utilize Aquarian energy for my own good and for the greater good of those around me? Going into Scorpio season, how can I utilize Scorpio energy? See what I'm saying? I think, see, you know, you know, have, I'm, you know that you've met at least one person who uses one of their astrological signs, whether it's their sun, moon, or rising, to excuse some shitty behavior of theirs. Now, all signs have their their strengths and their weaknesses. I don't care what your sign is. You got a strength and a weakness that comes along with that energy. Your job as an individual who is possessing said energy is to figure out how you can use that energy. Not how you can find excuses for how this energy is pushing you around like you're a little puppet. You don't want to let your energy, whether you're a Scorpio, Aries, Taurus, or Leo, I don't care. You don't let that energy drag you around and make decisions for you. And then just say, well, I can't help it. I'm a Virgo. Can't help it. Now, fuck that. Rise above that energy and you use it. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I think that's a big thing that's happening right here. And, and starting that process will start affecting the relationship in ways that you never would have thought. It's going to be very abstract. Okay? It's something that your ego analytical thinking brain never would have been able to figure out. And you're going to see it and be like, whoa, okay, that makes sense now. And things will start falling together in a very abstract way. Okay. All right. Random advice. Random advice. Whatever random advice Scorpio needs to hear the most. Random advice about anything. Any subject. No limits on the random advice. Love, romance, friends, family, career, finances, anything and everything in between. What random ass advice do we have for Scorpio? Ooh, ten of wands in the reversed. You are not a bad person for choosing not to take on burdens that aren't yours to take on. Taking on burdens that aren't yours to take on doesn't make you a good person. And refusing to take on burdens that aren't yours to take on does not make you a bad person. But if you do choose to take on a burden that's not yours to take on two things okay you do it with no expectations and make sure you're in the position to do it okay make sure you're in the position to do it but you do it with no expectations i was just telling libra this yesterday Every day, every day on social media, I see somebody bitching and complaining because they do things for other people. And then when they need something, those people are nowhere to be found. That tells me a lot about you when I hear you bitching about that. It tells me a lot about you. That means on, on some level, whether it's conscious or unconscious, you're not acting out of true love. You're acting with ulterior motives. You're acting with an expectation. If I do you a favor, I don't want anything in return. If you need gas money, because you don't, you ain't going to have gas to get to and from work for the week, and I toss you a hundred dollar bill, I don't want it back. Keep it. It's yours. Keep it. I don't want it back. I don't like that energy of you owe me and this. That. I don't like that energy. It's yours. Keep it. No expectations. I do that just because that's who I am. I would want somebody to help me if I needed help. And not hang it over my fucking head. You know? Not only does it make life so much easier to navigate when you do things with no expectations, but that also unlocks random spontaneous miracles okay because if you manage your expectations of others 
If you do something for somebody out of pure kindness, pure generosity, with no expectations and no motives, you just toss that homeless guy 20 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever, and you, you do it with no expectations, promise you the universe will pay you back when you least expect it. You can't be saying, okay, universe, I gave that homeless man a $20 bill. You see how good I am. I deserve a pat on the back, right? Are you going to reward me? You ain't getting nothing. But you see that little homeless man? And you know the ones that I like to help? I ain't going to lie to you. If I see you standing on the side of the road holding up a sign, I ain't helping you. I lived on the streets for six months. I know those people. I'm not helping you. You know who I'm helping? That homeless man that's just sitting over there in the corner, hiding, minding his own business. That's who I'm helping. You sitting over there, I can tell you don't want to be there. You ain't trying to make this a lifestyle. And believe me, I spent six months living under a bridge. The overwhelming majority of people on the streets are there because they want to be. I promise you that. I've been there. But I know I can see those of you who just, fuck, man, you just ended up in a, in a rough place. Life just kicked you down and you don't want to be there. And I can tell, I can read it on you. I can feel you because that's who I was. I'm going to slide up there when you least expect it and throw you a little 20, a little 50, a little 100, whatever. I don't want nothing in return. When you do that, release it, let it go. Promise you the universe is going to pay you back. Promise you. Mm -hmm. But back to the point, do things with no expectations. Not, not only that, but man, it just makes fucking life easier to navigate. That energy of you owe me, that is such a dense, low frequency. You know? And especially there are people, there are people out there, and actually earth signs are really bad about this. I see earth signs do this shit all the time. They'll do shit for you you didn't ask them to do. They'll just rush in and save the day and start doing all this stuff for you. And then they come back around and hang it over your head later. Well, I did all this for you. I, since I did that for you and I did this for you, I need help. Will you do this for me? Shoves you into a corner. And, and leaves you with no choice because you don't want to look like an asshole. That is incredibly fucking manipulative and sick and toxic. Don't play that game. Don't play that game. No. No, I'm not in a position to do that right now. No, I can't. I didn't ask you to do that for me. I didn't need you to do that for me. You chose to come do that out of the kindness of your heart. Okay. I appreciate that. But I didn't ask you to. Didn't need it to be done. You know what I'm saying? Don't play that game. Don't take on burdens that aren't yours to take on. Unless you're in the position to. And you do it with no expectations. Alrighty, I feel like those were the messages that my Scorpio friends needed to hear. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Thank you all once again for tuning in and playing along. Don't forget to check the description of this video if you would like to find out how to schedule a personal reading. And remember, $40 readings for October, y'all. That's going to be live and on my website all month long. All the information on how to go about scheduling a personal reading and finding out anything else, such as my social media, other YouTube channels, anything else that's relevant to anything is all in the description of this video. All right, I'm out of here now, y'all. I wish you love, luck, light, and prosperity on your journey. Stay blessed.